This is the Lexus RX 350 F Sport all wheel drive. And I'm gonna tell you why I think the F Sport package is absolutely underappreciated and something you should consider. I'm here in Colorado today and I wanna thank Lexus for loaning me this beautiful Grecian Blue RX. So let me tell you why I think the F Sport Hanley package is really underappreciated. But before we do that, let me explain what this RX is. So this new generation of RX debuted about, I think it was in 2022, I was there at the launch. And this is their mainstream, their big seller SUV. This is the volume baby here, this is it. And what we've got is this brand new grill, if you haven't seen this before. And I think it has a really interesting way and that sort of blends into the rest of the bodywork up front here. And the grill comes in different configurations depending on the configuration that you get. We've got some slats over here. We have the Lexus very sharp and pointy headlight design that had a check mark, which I think looks pretty good. And at first I was a little bit lukewarm on the RX with the design and the way it looked. And it has sort of grown on me. Now it is a little bit conservative. That's sort of what Lexus does. But I think overall the look has grown on me. It's not something that's going to get anyone all up in a tizzy over you buying something that looks too radical. It has still got some conservatism to it, but they've also got this really nice new design language with the rear taillight bar that they've been implementing across all of their vehicles. And I think it's just a well-proportioned, nice looking vehicle. And it actually is quite luxurious inside, which I'm gonna show you in a second, but there is a fair bit of cargo space here which I think is pretty good for this class. So I've got a suitcase in here. You could put a few suitcases in here. And something that I always really like is the little buttons over here. Just pops the seat down. I don't know why that amuses me so much, but for some reason it does. So when you put the, the back seats down, you've actually got a lot of really, really functional cargo space back here. And of course there is seating for five adults in here. This has got the black interior, but what I like about Lexus and what people don't really mention or talk about that much is unlike Toyota, where you pretty much go to the dealer and you have to, you're only able to take what's on the dealer lot. With a Lexus, you're actually able to custom order and configure it the way that you want. So here, of course, is the F-Sport badge. Let's talk about the different levels of the RX and what you can get. Then we're gonna go for a drive. I'm gonna show you what I think is some really cool stuff about the interior. So the RX comes in many, many different flavors. If you like Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors of that, you've got something akin to that here. So we have a gas version, which is the 2.4 liter engine, which this has. This makes about 271 horsepower and about 317 pound-feet of torque, give or take. Then you've got a hybrid version, and then you've got a plug-in hybrid version. And then you've got, at the top end, you've got the 500H, which is not a plug-in hybrid, but has the most power. It has around 366 horsepower and somewhere north of 400 pound-feet of torque. That's the more performance version. But this is something sort of a little bit closer to that. And I think this gives a very, very traditional kind of driving dynamics and the way that you drive it just feels like a regular old Lexus. You don't have the hybrid technology. So let's talk about the interior. We've got the F Sport Performance emblazoned on the headrest. These seats are very, very comfortable. They are fully adjustable. But what you notice most about getting into a Lexus is that you've got a really, really high standard of fit and finish, which I think is something that just sort of separates them from the pack, especially from Toyota. The stitching is always super clean here. There's no mistakes in the stitching. And what you've got over here, and sorry for the light, is you've got this sort of nice Alcantara piece, which sort of gives it a little bit more of an air of luxury. So you've got really soft stuff up here. Sorry, we are near an airport. You've got soft touch over here. And of course you have loads of space down for drinks over here. And you have this electronic latching system for the doors. Now, if they, if the battery dies or something like that, you can still pull it and get out uh, manually, which is a kind of a nice thing, but just to get out normally, you just press that little button there and the latch opens the door. And what I think also is really nice about Lexus products is that you've got a lot of nice materials in here. There's no piano black, thank God. But you have these nice little touches, like these little sort of patterns in the plastic here, which sort of give it just a little bit of a level up. Over here, we've got a wireless charging pad. 
I think there's another one down there and you've got USB-C and USB-A. And again, what I like is they're taking this material right over here and they're taking it all the way across the, across the dashboard. And you can see this is, this is hand stitched and it just sort of gives it, elevates it a little bit. And we've got this uh, aluminum insert here too. I think this actually looks better when you get into a sort of a, um, a different tone of fabric. So here we've got, you know, we have this black basically, but it looks really nice in, in shades of beige and gray, I think. It just sort of brightens up the cabin a little bit, but that's just kind of my preference. Let me close the door here. So you can just sort of see, you can see from back here what this cabin is all about. This is really, a nice cabin. Lexus is all about refinement and this is very, very quiet. And in the back here, there is a ton of space. I've got lots of knee room back here. I got lots of headroom back here too. We do have a sunroof that goes all the way to the back. And again, we have the continuation of this sort of nice fabric treatment, which I really like. You can probably see it a little bit better over here because of the sunlight. So this is a very nice interior and very nice place to spend. I wouldn't put five people in here for a long period of time, but you can definitely get three, four people in here very comfortably too. You've got your cup holders back here. I don't think this is a pass-through, which you don't really need. A 60-40 folding split rear seat, which I showed you up front at the video. And then you've got a couple of USB-C uh, chargers back here. And then you actually can control the heat and the cool coming out of the back too. And some pockets back here. So. This is a nice, quiet, refined kind of space, but let's talk about the technology. So this vehicle is actually built in Canada, and this has a base of around $57,000. This is optioned out to about 63. The RX goes anywhere from about 50 to $70,000. This particular one sort of puts it in the higher end bracket, mainly due to this F Sport handling package. And what I really like about this F Sport handling package, which we'll talk about when we go for a drive, is the fact that it has adaptive dampers. But let's talk about the technology, like I promised you here. So, so this has the 14 inch screen, which is an option. This is part of the new Lexus interface that they have been rolling out progressively over the last couple of years. I think it's actually quite good. It is quite uh, responsive. And of course you have a wireless Apple CarPlay in here too. So you can pull up your maps and also, You've got your climate control systems, which unfortunately are all digital. There's no physical controls here, but what you do have is this is always persistent. So this is always on the screen, so it never goes away. So that's kind of a nice thing. You've got heated and cooled seats, which is a nice feature. And let's go to the Lexus thing over here. So here's the main interface. And here's what you get with the F Sport handling package is here are these adaptive dampers. So because you've got adaptive dampers, you're able to choose between normal, sport, and eco. And what that does is it'll gives you different levels of uh, control over things like your powertrain. So you can choose between sport, normal, and eco. Obviously the eco is gonna give you the least amount of throttle and the most amount of fuel mileage. Suspension, which I really like, you've got sport and normal. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the drive and then you can change your steering from sport to normal too and even the air conditioning which is kind of a ridiculous thing i'm not really sure why but there's a lot of tech in here you can change the illumination inside including the color the different lighting the door control i mean there's really a lot that you can do in here and it does have this heads up display which i am a little bit mixed on Quite frankly, I know they rolled it out a couple years ago, but what you've got here on the steering wheel is you have these soft buttons. And you've got a couple hard buttons for things you're gonna use all the time, like your volume controls and your radar cruise control and so forth. But the rest is on this sort of little menu system. And you can see, I'm gonna start it up here. So of course you can see everything that you need to on the traditional uh, LED gauge cluster up here, but it does have this heads up display. Let me see if we can actually see it here. Okay, so it's not going to be sort of the best quality of video because heads-up displays are just difficult to, uh, to show on camera. But what you've got is once you start pressing these buttons over here with these soft buttons down here, with the soft buttons on the steering wheel, you can change from the different modes. So here you've got your display and here are your different driving modes, your adaptive cruise control and so forth. And then on the other side, on the left-hand side, you've got your entertainment control. So you've got your voice control, you've got your volume up and you're down, and then you can basically move between tracks 
you can change sources and so forth. So that is what the heads-up display, of course, is all about. And then once you have a navigation set in there, it's going to show you where you're going to. And it does actually work pretty well. You can even adjust the height of it up and down, which is nice too, and it is in color. So when you're navigating, I think it's really quite good. Now, one thing that I like is you got a lot of cameras on this here too. So you can really, when you're parking and you're trying to get into a difficult, tight spot, you can kind of figure out where you are with these cameras, which you can easily access from this button. And you can go to different type of modes here too. And I think this is just something that I really, really appreciate, especially parking a larger vehicle like this. I think it really helps out quite a bit too. And of course we have the Lexus safety system, which has a bunch of different modes. You can use this, you can have like adaptive lane, you have lane tracing, you've got adaptive distance, you've got adaptive speed, you've got all kinds of functions here which make it sort of a basic level two system, especially the lane tracing, it is actually quite good. are in the mountains. Let's see what 275 horsepower feels like. Honestly, it's not that bad. This vehicle weighs somewhere around 42, 4,300 pounds. So the power to weight ratio is pretty acceptable. And this has got a traditional eight speed automatic transmission. It does not have a CVT. So you've got those very noticeable shift points that you're used to if you're used to driving just a conventional SUV. And that is, I think, what this particular package is all about. This is not about trying to break the mold with electrification. There are no batteries in here. There are no electric motors. This is a very traditional SUV. And if you come from the V6 in the last generation, this is going to feel really, really familiar to you, even though this is a four cylinder. This actually has loads of torque, over 300 pound feet of torque, and it's quite noticeable and it's willing to kick down pretty quickly and you really feel that torque there is quite a bit but what I really like about Lexus I think what they do so well is the dynamics and the suspension so this of course has the adaptive variable suspension and we're able to put it in two different modes either in sport or normal and I've got it in sport right now and I've got to say the ride quality in this vehicle is excellent. This is something that Lexus has really, really perfected over the years. And when you move up to a luxury vehicle from something that is a little bit less than a luxury vehicle, I think that's one of the things that really makes a difference in the overall driving impression is the ride quality. And this has the ability to smooth out bumps in a way that the traditional suspension just isn't able to do because these adaptive dampers are able to sense what is going on with the pavement and make adjustments thousands of times per second. Also, we've got really, really good body and motion control here. This is, a, like I said, over 4,000 pounds, but it really corners well. It really makes it so that you don't feel the weight so much. And I've left it in sport pretty much my entire time driving it because you've got you've got better motion control over over bumps and sort of whoop de doos and uneven pavement and it is not a stiff ride at all even though this is the F Sport handling package this is not something that you're going to be taking to the racetrack it's not something that is a replacement for you know any kind of sporty vehicle but this is you know, a sports car is what I mean but this is a sort of a sporty SUV but it is toned down quite a bit in keeping with the Lexus philosophy of this sort of driver involvement that they have. And it's really good. Uh, the steering has a couple different weights to it, again, depending on the mode that you're in. I've got it in the heavier weight right now. It is not heavy. It is still pretty light. But when you've got it in the sport mode, it just gives you a little bit more heft in your steering feel. The actual amount of feel that you're getting through the wheel is is pretty good. I actually think Toyota has been doing a good job lately with their steering systems. I think Honda still does a little bit better in terms of the driver feedback that you're getting through the steering wheel, but this is this is quite good. And I've been in these canyons. I'm going up to Estes Park in Colorado. It is absolutely stunning. It is so beautiful here today. And this is a really 
this is a nice vehicle to be taking up to Estes Park on a beautiful sunny uh, fall day in Colorado. Another thing I like about this is the sight lines on here are excellent, and I love this big sunroof. This has a really big, airy, open feel to it. I really feel all the sunlight coming in here, kind of warming up my body, even though it's a little bit chilly outside. And this just has a nice, open, airy feeling to this cockpit. It's a very nice driving vehicle, and I, I realize most people are going to be commuting in this and taking it through the city. But if you have even the slightest bit of interest in a slightly more sporty SUV, this is it. I really like this package a lot because what you're getting here compared to the 500H, which is the hybrid version of this, which makes 366 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, is, well, this costs a little bit less money. It's about five or $6,000 less uh, as a base MSRP. And you've got a more traditional driving experience without the hybrid and a little bit less complexity here too. So, you know, down the road, there's probably gonna be a little bit less to repair, but it really, for me, boils down to this adaptive suspension. I love adaptive suspension in pretty much everything, and I think it just sort of elevates the vehicle a little bit beyond what you're getting in the other packages. It makes it a little bit more interesting to me for a big, you know, RX. This is a, you know, their mainstream luxury SUV, and it really feels like it. This is a big step up from the I would say sort of wallowy last generation of the RX, which I didn't really like that much and was kind of bland. This has got a lot more driver involvement in it. Again, this is not any kind of sports car, but for an SUV, this feels nice and taut. This is enjoyable to drive. You've got some paddles here too, so you can you can downshift as, as you like. You can upshift. It's got a little bit of sport to it. On the hybrid line of RXs, you have an electric motor driving the rear wheels, but this is a traditional, conventional all-wheel drive system. What that means is you have a traditional drive shaft physically connecting the rear end of the vehicle with a differential, and the car is able to transfer power to the rear wheels as needed in snowy, icy, difficult conditions, and it actually has an off-road mode, which will use the brakes and adjust power to apply it to the wheel that needs it most. This is not like a full off-road vehicle, but you can definitely take it on some bumpy trails and it also has a hill descent mode as well. This is an interesting vehicle. This is an interesting package because as you're probably aware, everything is moving to electrification, especially Toyota is really moving heavily into hybridization and they've got some pure battery electric vehicles too, which they are sort of taking a little bit of a step back from right now. Akio Toyota, who stepped down as the CEO of Toyota, is now the chairman of Toyota, which of course encompasses Lexus, sort of famously said a couple years ago that he thought that companies were moving too quickly into electrification, and his stance and the company's stance is that they wanted to embrace a strategy for the future, which is going to encompass multiple forms of energy. Now that we're in the fall of 2023, the manufacturers have been seeing across the board a drop off in the interest in pure battery electric vehicles. That's just sort of the state of the industry right now. And I think the reason for that is that right now we're at a place where we're sort of the end of the early adoption curve. All of the early adopters have pretty much adopted. They've got their vehicles. And we have a situation now where we have a lot of these first generation electric vehicles that are on the road. And we got some limitations around them that some people don't like. Primarily range, that is one of the things. And also the public charging infrastructure. People are not really willing to accept the fact that it's difficult to take a road trip in an EV and have a good charging experience. I know there's a lot of people that have great charging experiences on the road. I know some of them personally. However, in my experience, having owned an EV, if you're gonna be taking a road trip, the charging experience is going to be a mixed bag. You're gonna get some places where it's easy to charge, some places where it's difficult to charge. So what I'm getting at here is my point is it's interesting that I find myself in this very traditional, non-electrified Lexus that is, you know, probably going to continue for quite a few years in this generation. But I think moving forward, 
Toyota is going to embrace electrification more heavily, and we're just going to see more hybrid vehicles from Lexus and Toyota, and also all the other manufacturers too as we move towards a more electrified future. It is a stunning piece of architecture with an absolutely stunning view of the mountains and really perfect place to take this Lexus RZ out for a quick little weekend jaunt. So the RZ is Lexus's most popular SUV and they're definitely not going to mess with it, which is why we have a package like the 2.4 liter, which is the most popular engine choice, turbocharged, makes pretty good power, really replaces the V6. You're gonna get anywhere from 21 miles per gallon in the city to about 28 on the highway. You're not getting the best MPG, but you also have a lot more power and responsiveness than you do with the hybrid, and you have the traditional transmission. And for people who really don't want to step into the future quite so rapidly, this is a great choice. As I said before, Toyota didn't take a lot of chances with the RX, but they really sweated all the details. They really got everything right to please the largest possible crowd. I can't really think of any flaws with the RX. It drives so well, and it's just a nice luxury vehicle at what is not really a ridiculous price, actually. My name is Eric. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.